In today's video, I'm sharing some decoupage techniques and DIYs, and these techniques are new to me. I want to welcome you all to Creative by Nature DIY and Decor. My name is Donna. So for this first project, I'm using this sandwich board and it's got that chalkboard effect on the front. I'm going to be using this white acrylic gesto. It's the Artist Loft brand from Michaels. And I'm going to apply a coat of that over top of the chalkboard sign portion of the sandwich board. I find that gesso is a great primer. I like to use it a lot on surfaces like this because it covers up the color really well and then you don't have to apply as much craft paint. So I allow that to dry well and then I'm going to apply the craft paint of your color choice. I'm using cream and I'm just applying that onto the surface and then spreading it out with a soft brish bristle brush. You can apply a one to two coats of your craft paint. It really depends on the transparency of the craft paint that you use. So another thing you could do is paint out the frame. I chose to leave mine just as is. All right, so our craft paint is all nice and dry. Next, I'm gonna be using a piece of acetate that's the same size as the inside of our frame. And then you will want some napkins in the pattern of your choosing. This one is from Dollar Tree. Now you're going to want to use a piece of tape to remove the layers on the back side of your napkins. It just makes it so much easier to remove. So now I'm gonna place my acetate on the area that I want to use on the inside of our frame. So this is a technique that I learned from both Patio Elf as well as our Upcycled Life. I'm gonna have both those videos and the channels linked down below so you can go check out the original videos that I learned from. I'm just going to trace around the acetate so I have the exact size I need for this project. Then I'll take my scissors and cut it out. Now in the original tutorial that I had seen, she actually used a sheet protector sleeve and she was applying this technique to a larger surface that didn't have a frame like I'm sharing here. Uh, but I am um, going to be doing it this way because I want it to fit inside my frame. So you want to spray your acetate and then put the right side of your image down onto this water. Now I should have been more careful with the placement of my napkin because I did end up getting some wrinkles. Um, I know that on Patio Elf's channel, when she did this technique, she was being quite careful, so then she wouldn't get many wrinkles. Uh, but I did my best and smoothed them out. I was actually really impressed with how this technique worked, so just keep watching, it is pretty cool. So I just wiped up my excess water and then I'm going to be applying a good amount of decoupage glue onto the painted portion of our sandwich board. So I'm just going to nicely smooth it out. I don't want predominant brush strokes, so I am using a soft bristle, bristle brush as well. So once you have that in place, you can then take a rag or a sponge and just remove any excess water off of the napkin just by dabbing it, just like I did right there. Just be very gentle with how you do that. Next, you'll place the napkin down into the glue and then gently spread it out with your fingers, just as I'm showing you right here. You can see it's all in place and the acetate is facing up. I'm gonna use a piece of tape to lift the acetate up and you'll see it pops up and the napkin stays in place in the glue. It is so, so cool. So you're gonna want to set this aside and allow it to dry. All right, it is all nice and dry and I ended up having a little bit of extra napkin overlapping onto the frame as you can see. So I'm just using a really sharp utility knife and I'm just gonna cut along the frame gently to remove that excess. I'm sure that if you measured right, <laughs> then you probably won't have this problem. But if you do end up having a little bit of overlap, then this is a great way to remove that. 
Okay, I want to protect my napkin, so I'm going to go over it again with a coat of my decoupage glue. I do end up adding quite a bit because the napkin ended up absorbing quite a bit, bit of it, so just keep that in mind. All right, so our decoupage glue is all nice and dry and you can leave it as is, it's gorgeous, but I wanted to use this saying in the frame. I am going to be adding a little bit of this blue pigment ink on the edge. I find that it just helps images like this just pop away from a busy background such as this one. So I'm going to just ink that up. Looks very pretty, I love it. And now I'm going to add some foam adhesive tape to the back of our image. I like to do this when I want something to stand out a little bit more. It just helps to give it a bit more dimension. So I filled in the back with our foam tape and now I'm figuring out the placement and then I will remove the backing of our tape and then you can put it in place as desired. So again, you can stop right here, but you know me by now, if you've been watching me for a while, I love to add a touch of nature whenever I can. And I decided that I wanted to frame out my image with some branches. So I like to go foraging for my branches and whatnot. And I just have a stash of them in my collection and I just cut them down to size. And then I will be adding these using some hot glue. So I continue to add the branches around our image and then it's ready for display. I have to say I love this technique. It worked really well. I find that there's hardly any wrinkles and if there were, it was because I didn't lay the napkin down properly, but I am still quite pleased with how it turned out. For our next project, I'm using this Dollar Tree truck wood sign and I'm removing the hanger off as you can see right here. Uh, but don't throw that away, we're going to be using that again. So this was a handy tip that I received from a few viewers and that is to use a blow dry dryer or a heat tool to loosen the adhesive on wood embellishments like this. So I just applied my heat to the top and the bottom and then I used a flat spatula to get underneath to try and lift up the wood embellishments without damaging anything. So I just continued to apply some heat and then use my tool and I was blown away at how well this works. So to all of you who suggested this, thank you. So with a little work and some patience, I managed to get all my pieces off and I'm just using a sanding block just to remove any of the rough texture that was left behind by any adhesive if there was any left behind. Next, I select my napkins. Now you can get napkins everywhere it seems these days and you can find so many beautiful patterns just like this. I like to use patterns that are all over and randomly placed on a napkin. And as you can see, you tape works so well to remove the backing of these napkins. So now I'm going to take my blank truck and I'm going to figure out the placement I want for our decoupage. <laughs> so I'm just going to move it around and then once I get that figured out, I am going to take my scissors and cut around the truck. I don't want too much of an overhang, but just enough so if I do wiggle it around a little bit, there is going to be a bit of flexibility. So I'm going to be using my Deco Art Day Capage Glue again and a soft bristled brush. Going to want to lay the right side 
of your napkin facing up on top of our truck. Now for this technique, you're going to apply the glue on top of your napkin and you're starting from the middle and working your way out. Now this technique, I learned this from Patio Elf and she had originally done this technique on glass. Now I should have done it that way. I should have done it on a piece of glass. I'm sure it would have worked out way better than doing it on wood, but I wanted to give it a whirl and see how um, I could do to see if it would work without putting a layer of decoupage down first. And it does, but it was kind of tricky. The napkin kept on wanting to lift up on me and I was getting a little frustrated admittedly, but like I said, Patio Elf originally did it on glass. So another thing both ladies do is use some saran wrap to press out the wrinkles. Now I tried it on this, but again, um, it, it just actually wasn't really working for me. I find that using my fingers very gently works Better. I mean, this worked okay, but I was finding the napkin was wanting to lift up a little bit every time I dabbed down. But it definitely could have been user error on my part. So as you can see, I just used my fingers. So I set my piece aside to dry. And while that was drying, I decided to work on my wood pieces. I'm using Arteza Outdoor Acrylic Paints in brown, this beautiful dark teal, and a gray. I'm using the brown on the wood slats on the back of the truck, and I'm just using one coat on each piece. So this dark teal is actually called Jungle Green and it was a perfect match with the napkin that I use. I was actually quite amazed. So I was really happy with that. So I am just gonna continue to paint my pieces. The hubcaps I ended up painting gray. Okay, so now my wood pieces are drying and my truck and the decoupage glue is all nice and dry. So you can see that there are some wrinkles, but I'm okay with that. I figured that it just kind of adds to the charm of this vintage looking truck. I'm going to be using this emery board now to remove the excess around the edge. It would just be like using a sanding block on the edge. It actually works really, really well. Again, this was recommended by some of you, my viewers. So I removed all the way around the edge of the truck and now I'm working on the inner portions of the truck. So I'm just using my scissors to trim out the excess in the window. And again, I'm using the emery board to get in there. It works great in all these tight little small spots. So the door handle here, I couldn't get my emery board inside there. So I'm just using this palette knife and just scraping the way or the excess away. I'm just being careful not to damage the wood. So I do the same thing with the door and I use a combination of the emery board as well as my palette knife. All right, our truck is all ready to go and our wood pieces, but I am detail oriented if you haven't <laughs> noticed by now and I decided that I wanted to distress all my wood pieces so I'm just using a sanding block and I am sanding the edges of the wood pieces and then I also end up sanding the edges of the truck. Now you'll see here how that looks and I like it but I'm gonna end up doing one more technique and I'll show you that here in a bit, but I discovered I needed to do a few other steps before I went any further. So here's one of those steps. I did not like the gray against the napkins, so I'm adding a bit of cream paint over top and it dulled down that gray it just kind of warmed it up a bit. And then I also ended up taking my sanding block once they were dry and distressing these as well. So I'm done sanding all my pieces and they look great, but you can see here, 
It doesn't look like this piece has any tires. So I'm using a circle a die that I have in my stash and it is the perfect size for the wheel portion of our wood truck. Just use a pencil to trace around the top of the die and then I will be filling it in with some paint. So I'm toning down the black paint with just a little bit of the gray. I felt the straight up black was just going to be a little too harsh for our vintage truck. So now I've got my black paint dulled down and I'm going to fill in the tire portion of our truck. So the beauty of this is that you are going to paint within our circle and I do end up going outside of our circle just a little bit, but not by much. Uh, I just thought the proportion looked a little off, but so you can see here, I filled that in and once you got both of them filled in, you can go back in and add a little extra if needed and then allow it to dry. Our paint is all dry and now I am going to distress the edges of the truck. Now this part is optional. <laughs> I, I don't know why I get really hung up on some of these details, but I don't know. I find that sometimes they just really elevate a piece. So these steps are completely and totally optional. Okay, so I felt like, again, it just needed another step. I'm using archival ink in potting soil. I am going to add just a little bit to each of my wood pieces on the edge and just a little bit here and there on the surface. I wanted it to look like there was rust on the truck or like some dirt as if this truck has been at the flower farm or something like that. So. That's why I decided to add this bit of ink. Now archival ink is permanent, so that's why I decided to go with that. You could use distress ink if you want, but that is not permanent. I am adding it here to the truck as well. Again, I wanted that aged look and that aged patina. It even helps the door to pop just a little bit better. So at this point, I thought I was ready to start assembling it, but when I laid this wood frame on the back of the truck, I'm like, wait a second, it doesn't look right. And I realized I needed to paint the inside of this frame part here. So I just went ahead and used my brown paint. I had actually seen others do this as well, and it looks a lot more realistic then. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that dry, and then I, I'm going to start to glue everything together. So as I said before at the beginning, I am going to be using this as a wall hanging. So I poked those holes again, and then I was ready to start laying all my pieces out. I'm using hot glue, but of course use any adhesive that you like to use. If you're using hot glue, you'll want to move quickly. So I'm just applying my wood piece down and you have a little bit of wiggle room, not much. So uh, you want to really do a good job on lining everything up when you go to lay these pieces down. All the wood embellishments are in place and now I decided that I wanted to make this look like it was from a flower farm. I'm adding some greenery to the top portion of the wood frame at the back of our truck, I'm trimming off any excess on the back side so it lays flat. And then I'm gonna go in and add some flowers. I'm just trimming these pieces off and applying them using some hot glue. And these are just some scraps of flowers that I had in my stash. I thought these little peach flowers would tie everything together nicely. I think it's so cute. I am loving how this is turning out. 
and once you got all those flowers in place you can then put your string back in place I'm just using that same jute string and you'll just have to make sure that you kind of weave the string through the flowers so you can hang it up so even though I struggled with the decoupage technique in the beginning I am still super happy with how this truck looks isn't it just gorgeous I'm really happy with this project For this decoupage technique, you are going to need a wood plaque sign of some type. I got mine from Dollarama, actually a friend had gifted this to me, but you can find these at any craft store or lots of different dollar stores. You'll want to apply a generous amount of your decoupage glue on the surface of your wood sign. Now again, I am using the Deco Art decoupage glue but use your favorite decoupage medium so again for this technique I had learned this from both patio elf and our upcycled life I will again have those videos and channels linked down below I made sure that I applied the decoupage glue right up to the edge so I allowed that first layer to dry and then I'm going to go in again and apply another layer. This layer of decoupage glue is really important and you also want to make sure you get the edges. So I'm going to continue to apply this and allow it to dry well. I have found other people have done a lot of these other techniques as well, but I found these two channels had the best tutorials. JISC is a store here in Canada. I'm not sure if you guys have it down in the United States or not, but they are kind of a European store similar to Ikea, but on a smaller scale. They've got gorgeous napkins. So I am gonna be using this beautiful floral napkin and again, pulling away the backing sheets with my tape. So I am going to figure out where I want my napkin to be. You're going to need a heat safe pad. I'm using my Cricut heat pad and you're gonna place your wood piece down and then figure out the placement of your napkin. In the meantime, you've got your iron heating up. I've got mine heating to the number four. You'll need a piece of parchment paper as that is heat safe. And then you're going to start to move your iron over top. Now this is in real time. It's not sped up so you can see how slow I'm going, but I'm trying not to linger in one spot. Now, next time I do this, I am definitely going to try my Cricut heat press, but I thought since not everybody has a heat press, I wanted to try the iron. So I am making sure I'm focusing on the edges of our wood piece because we really want those to adhere down. So what's happening is that the napkin is being melted into the decoupage glue. I have to say that this is by far my absolute favorite technique. There were no wrinkles, not one wrinkle it was so cool and I actually found that it was really really satisfying to do so continue to use your iron on your wood piece until you got all your edges adhered down because we don't want any of our napkin lifting or tearing we want a really good nice secured napkin so I had set this aside and I allowed it to cool down and oh, <laughs> It just feels so smooth. I am so happy with how it turned out. So before I add another layer of decoupage glue, I decided I would trim off the excess napkin, just using my scissors right here. And then I am going to go over it with another coat of my decoupage glue. I end up using quite a bit because the napkin did soak up quite a bit of the glue. So I'm just going to apply that and then I am going to allow this to dry. A 
Okay, so the glue is all nice and dry. I'm using my sanding block to remove the excess around the edge. Again, I find that this works best. So I'm just gonna continue to work around that edge. And then we are ready to embellish our sign. So I decided to keep this project simple for you guys. I'm just going to add this welcome galvanized tin piece from Dollar Tree. They have a pack of three over the autumn season and I thought this piece would work great. I am using some Gorilla silicone sealant on this plate piece. I find that then you've got a little bit of wiggle room and this sealant works really, really good as an adhesive. So I'm just going to add little dollops here and there on the backside of our word and then I'm gonna press it into place. And you do have a little bit of wiggle room to move it. And then I like to always flip it upside down, add a little bit of weight to allow it to dry. And here it is. Isn't it pretty? It's so simple, but yet it makes such a statement. So as always, I would love to know which one was your favorite as well as mention any other decoupage techniques you would like me to try. I want to thank you all so much for being here today. Here's a link to a garden inspired DIY playlist. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.